Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for tuning in to my video. Today I'm going to be installing a hitch and light kit on a 2022 Kia Carnival. It's the uh, brand new model from Kia. Uh, we'll have a full in-depth review video of the vehicle itself and how it is for a family of six. Um, totally separate video. On this one, uh, I ordered all the parts and everything to go ahead and put this hitch on because we have a need to tow a trailer. Um, and there is basically no information out there right now. One, on how to even find the parts, and then two, how to get them installed. So uh, I'm going to go do all that research and figure out how to do it, and then walk you through step by step. Um, right now, I'll show you the parts that you need. Uh, so the first thing I found when I started looking for the light kit was a generic light kit. Um, I think it was made by Kurt, I'm not sure, but it was generic, the type you have to cut into your wires or tap into them, and it has a universal controller. I do not recommend that. Um, you know, through my research, uh, it looked like that would void your warranty even. So I stayed away from that and I went to um, kiastuff.com where they sell genuine Kia parts, and I bought the plug and play light kit. Uh, literally, you just unplug one of the um, pigtails in the back where the light plugs in and you plug this into it. Um, so we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. But if you want to look that up on KiaStuff.com is where I ended up ordering it. This is the part number starting with the R. You can also look it up by this P006. It's 180 bucks. I got free shipping on it. Uh, I might have got a 10% um, discount code by giving them my email and subscribing and all that. I'm not real sure, but it was about 180 bucks. Uh, and then this is the hitch that is made specifically for the um, Carnival. And I, I shopped around on this one because normally I buy this stuff from E-Trailer. The reviews were terrible. Said it showed up in a plastic bag, scratched up and rust on it and all that. Uh, so if you read through those reviews, you'll find there's a, an outfit that sells it called Auto Accessory Garage, I think it's what it's called. And here's your part number here. But I was actually able to get it with a coupon um, for $208, free shipping. And it showed up in four days. So some people were complaining about two to four weeks shipping. This thing showed up. It's in a box. Um, it's in excellent shape, so I was very satisfied with the way both of these were shipped. This one, uh, let's see, this one showed up in about a week. Uh, maybe less, maybe it was only five days. So both of these, if I had ordered them at the same time, which I didn't, I ordered this one a couple weeks ago. I've been sitting on it waiting for this. I didn't pull the trigger on this one right away because I didn't want to spend 180 bucks. but after doing all the research to find that, yes, you should do plug and play, don't void your warranty, plus I'm, I'm not going to chop into any wires or any of that stuff, so ultimately decided this is the way I wanted to go. If I had ordered these at the same time, this one just would have trailed this one by a couple of days, but uh, definitely came in very quick compared to some of the reviews and what people were saying about it, so I uh, was very satisfied with the buying and uh, receiving process in the hitch and light kit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open these, figure out what tools I need exactly so I can show you exactly what tools you're going to need. Then we'll get into the actual install and see what all it's going to take. Uh, I'm sure you'll learn what a few different ways not to do it because uh, I am by no means a mechanic at all. <laughs> so if you're just a regular dude wondering if you can do this on your own and save yourself some money, uh, definitely. You know, the dealership could have done it. I think it would have been $595 for the part, plus they would have charged me the labor tax and all that. And uh, yeah, I might have gone that route, but they had no estimated time on when they were going to get their parts in or when they could have actually done it. So I didn't want to wait and save myself a few hundred bucks. So let's get into it. Let's tear these open and, and get going on this. All right, so opening this up here, um, they, to be honest, they kind of half-ass packed it. Uh, over here where the box is blown open, this got a little bit rubbed up on the side. Uh, overall, pretty good shape. There's no obviously no rust or anything like that if you read that in the reviews. A little bit right here scuffed up. But you know what? It's a giant piece of metal that goes under your vehicle. Who cares? I'm happy with it. 
I think that they did a, a good job. I included a picture of the packing invoice so you can see part numbers and all that jazz. So we'll get this torn out here. You know, maybe they should have sent it in a big black bag. All right, so I've got this open, this thing here. Excellent shape. Once I unwrapped it, came in this little bag here, had the instructions, and then these bolts and washers. I mean, this seems pretty straightforward. If you need to pause and screen shoot right there, tools required. Okay, nothing fancy. Um, I'm gonna include pictures. You can screen shoot these. This is the little installation manual. It does look like we're gonna have to trim the piece of plastic that we have to take off. Now I'll show the instructions in the light kit, but it has something similar to this. And it shows you that this plastic piece has to come off anyway to put the lights in. So um, you're gonna need to, uh, so I'm gonna do the lights first. I'm gonna pull this off, do the lights, trim this, and then I'll move on from there, so. But uh, this is what it looks like once you unpack it. Not much to it. All right, you know what, while I'm sitting here, let's get into the light kit. I'm sure you're wanting to see what's actually inside the box. A lot of times just seeing the actual product can answer some questions, so. Uh. All right, feel free to pause if you want to read over. I'm gonna post this up in the highest quality I can, so you should be able to pause and see all of this read it all and everything. everything in this little manual. We got some zip ties. We've got a very long zip tie with a little keeper there. Okay, and looks like we got a that's probably a fuse. This is gonna plug in. There you go find out exactly how this thing works here. I had assumed that this would plug in line, but I don't know. So I guess maybe there's a plug back there dedicated for this. Um, you know, I did an install exactly like this on a 2018 Dodge Grand Caravan, and I had to pull apart the connection. And then this on that kit had one side like this and another side where you would plug back in the original and so it kind of like went in between the connection you plugged it in sandwiched it in there and it was like a bypass or a pass through whatever so this though this is dedicated so that's kind of cool this will get mounted up and then oh you know what that's not a fuse this is the part for your trailer All right there you go so it's uh, a four prong trailer if you didn't hear me say it earlier, not a mechanic, now you know for sure. So, there you go. Okay, that's what's in the light kit. Now I'm gonna go grab these tools here. I don't have a torque wrench, but I have a really big socket wrench. I'm gonna use some red thread locker on. Uh, maybe even a little uh, leverage bar to make sure I get it super tight. So we'll go grab all this stuff and get going here. Okay, getting underneath the vehicle here. The instructions say that we've got to take these little plastic keepers, should be six of them. We're gonna take those off. So I'm gonna grab my screwdriver and get started on that and pop these out and see what we got under here. Okay, so 
there were seven clips that just dropped right down. These were really easy to take out. Flathead screwdriver, just pop this straight out. I didn't need a special tool or any of that. And then now right under here, this is where we connect, right here. So it was all exposed, it just dropped down and there it was. So we're gonna push on this, pull this little protector cap off. Now we've exposed where I said that that's gonna plug directly into its dedicated spot here. You see, this is gonna line up. Just like that, boom, that easy. Now all I have to do is notch out a spot for this to drop down and the instructions show how to cut that. So we're gonna do that next, but boom, I mean, this is hooked up. We'll have to secure this up in here and then string our cable out to where it would be accessible from the hitch itself, so. Uh, but anyway, that was actually really easy. Okay. Okay, so looking at this here, it gives an instruction on where to cut it out. And I'm guessing we'd be looking at it like this and like this. So then it would have me cutting this out here, looks like but I'm just gonna set this to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and install the hitch itself. And then just to be sure, I'll hold this up to ensure that that is in fact right where I have to cut it out. So we'll save this for last because I'd have that off anyway to make this install easier. So we'll go ahead and switch over uh, and finish this up here. Okay, before I get too far along here, just simply zip tied this little controller box on the top. And then the big zip tie goes through these metal holes right there uh, along this wire, just like it shows in the instructions. Now I'm just gonna go through and zip tie this stuff here. We'll bring this out and then it'll come up out by where the hitch is gonna be. So it shows where to zip tie, I believe right here is one of the spots. And then I'll just pick a couple of spots that look good and safe out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up, uh, literally just three zip ties away. Okay, so after looking at that a little bit more, I'm gonna leave that till I am all done putting the hitch in and then putting that little cover back on before I decide where I wanna zip tie that up. Just because I'd hate to put it somewhere and just have to move it again. So we move on to this other side here. We've got the exhaust pipe that's in the way. And all we have to do, and it even says this in the instructions, we can see that is reach up here right here this little spot right here just kind of push this that way and it'll pop off and this will drop down enough that we can take the hitch and it can go right slide right up in here so if I can do this one-handed maybe I can do it one-handed See. Yeah, that's definitely how it comes off. You just have to give it a good push or kind of work it around. <clears throat> All right, I need two hands. Okay, after fighting with this for a while, I finally figured out how this works. So this little rubber grommet has a hole in it right in the middle. You have to take your screwdriver, big old screwdriver and stick it in that hole like this and then you pull it back towards yourself like that and it pops this thing out enough that you can then push it off it's probably really hard to see but otherwise I couldn't get it off by hand I was trying to figure it out I've never worked, done anything like this before but I, I did figure that out screwdriver in whip it back and it pulls it over now I should be able to pop it off by hand and I'm working it and it's coming now at least. So I'll go ahead and pull that off the rest of the way by hand now. Okay, so I actually just used the screwdriver more and just got off, to, got on it a little bit harder. Now this will scooch out of the way so I can actually access. Before you can't access, you know, get your, um, your ratchet on it to screw those down. But now you move this out of the way. 
I can get those bolts in there, so we should be good to go now. So we'll get this uh, this side lifted up and get those bolts started. There's three on this side and three on the other side, and we'll torque them down. I'm gonna use that red thread locker, and, and that's really gonna be it. Okay, so this is actually gonna go around on top. So this comes down this way, and I was able to prop this up on this side. So it's gonna be interesting. So I wonder how easy it's gonna to be to access those bolts. I guess I'll have to hold this down and away this way to try to get my ratchet and my bolts up in there. Yeah, we'll see how it works out here. All right, so step by step here. We got this side. We just held this side up first. The other side's hanging on to the uh, muffler. This side, we uh, finger threaded them in and then I tightened them down with my impact. Uh, not all the way, but just so that it's not hanging down. It took a, what am I reading there, right? A three-fourths socket, and I've got it on my big impact here. So now we're going to try to do the same thing on the other side, which we have to work around this exhaust. So we're going to kind of pull this down and out of the way and try to finger tighten them in there. Okay, so that actually wasn't too bad. We just held this down and out of the way. We'll finger tight those in. I'm going to hit them with the impact. I should have plenty of room to get around them. Then I'll uh, finish them off. Make sure everything's kind of centered up and even here. Then we'll finish them off with the uh, giant ratchet. Okay. Now, on these bolts here, there is no way you're going to hit that furthest bolt. Or hell, even the second bolt there. Let me hit its focus with just an extension, okay? I needed all of these guys. I needed this guy here. Sounds like my son's escaping. But I needed this guy here to reach up at an angle. The first one we did this way, didn't we? Yeah, the first one we had to come at it this way. And I was able to get on it and tighten it the very best that I could. Uh, the second one, uh, oh, and the trick to this one was hand threading it in all the way till you couldn't hand thread it anymore and I just took the socket by itself and did it all the, otherwise there was no way I was getting on it but once I hand threaded it all the way up there then I was able to just get on it with this and then finish it off with no attachments whatsoever same thing with this one all the way in hand thread and then uh, I didn't need this guy I actually just took all the attachments off my ratchet and I was able to fit up in there and torque it down and then this last one I was able to get on no problem. So that's how this side worked out with this being in the way. But we managed to do it. I guarantee you though, you're not gonna be able to do it without one of these. And I had this kit from the last one of these installs that I did on that Dodge Grand Caravan. It was required. And I would say on this one, required on this one too. And nowhere did it say that in the instructions. So that's a good tip, need to know, need to have that part. Okay, back over to this side tighten those down there's nothing keeping you from being able to get to these three very easy to do uh, now that that's done i'm going to go ahead and zip tie and secure my um, uh, trailer wire here along over to the side i'll just go bring it over probably up through here like that and i don't know i'll figure out a way to put it on there but I'm really that's it that's pretty much it all I've got to do is if you got to chop that down still uh, I'm just going to use some shears to shave off the spot that will cover this back up here and slap that back on put those pins in and uh I mean that's it this thing is done it really wasn't that bad at all and it looks good we'll do a we'll do a finish up here once it's all done my battery's actually almost dead so I'm trying to rush through this but uh all said and done six bolts little bit of monkey in with that uh, tailpipe, but it was actually pretty easy. Okay, uh, so I did use the instructions for measuring this thing out here and used my tape measure, marked it off, cut it out uh, with just a razor blade, worked fine and it did work. So I'm gonna put these pops back in place and then I'll have my cover back on and it's not perfect, but um, it definitely, made the room it was supposed to make and I'll be able to retain that plastic piece. Hey guys, I had to switch phones actually. I switched over my work phone. My other one died. But this is it. Finished up. 
this is what it looks like i'm uh you know i'm five foot ten so if you're standing here and you look down at it i mean i'd call that low profile i don't i wouldn't call it hidden um but especially when you get the ball on there but w even without the ball you can see the platform here still kind of sticks out a little bit but it's really not bad at all uh, my wife liked it you know and this is uh really her vehicle primarily and as long as she likes it that's all that matters but uh let me just give you a look i'm gonna clean up that cable a little bit uh i ran out of zip ties but i'm gonna go back through and uh, kind of secure that a little better. I like to actually use my drill press on these and I will drill a hole out and seat a magnet with some stick and seal extreme nice big earth magnet You can buy those at like Menards uh, Lowe's Home Depot and then this will stick anywhere you want to stick it uh, That's how I like to do it instead of tons of zip ties, but it'll keep it up top So I'll probably like run a zip tie here and then just have the magnet uh, here to keep it up and away. I've lost a couple of these from falling down and getting scratched and whatnot. So uh, on this one, I'll do that later. But for now, I just needed to get this on there tonight. Uh, but you can see it comes across here. And that little bracket that I had a lot of trouble with up there getting off was so easy to put back on. I just reached up there and pushed it back on and it went right back on. Uh, and I'm talking about that little rubber grommet that kept the this uh, pipe from dropping down. You can see it right there. Um, super easy to put back on, no problem at all. <laughs> and on the other side, yeah, we've got the plastic is still up there, uh, cut out. You can see where the cord's coming out there. But overall, uh, honestly, it was really easy to install. Um, I couldn't have done it without that additional socket swivel piece that I had showed you earlier. I would have stalled out and had to go buy one. But uh, I think all said and done, this looks great. For our purposes now, we can haul uh, whatever we need to haul. We've got a trailer. Um, uh, the way I understand it, I believe this is rated for 3,000 pounds. And I think this vehicle can tow 5,000 pounds. I could be wrong. If I am wrong, please put it down in the comments. Let me know if you happen to know. <laughs> Um, exactly what it can tow uh, let me know but uh, all said and done I got away with uh, just under 400 bucks um, did it myself uh, we did this in about an hour and 10 minutes uh, my wife was an extra set of hands just holding each side up now that I know how to do it I could probably do it in 30 by myself um, you know it's just like anything hopefully this video helps you out uh, maybe you saw a couple things that I could have done differently, saved some other people some time. Please put that in the comments. You know, if you've done a ton of these and you said, man, you should have done it like this, put that down there in the comments so uh, other people will know. Any shortcuts, you know, that we can throw out there and save some people time and money. That's what my videos are all about. Uh, just trying to save some people time, money, give them some resources they didn't have so we can do this stuff on our own. Um, like I said, that's what it's all about. So thank you very much for watching my video. I hope that this helped you out. If it did, please like, subscribe, and share so we can get this out to other people. And I think that looks great. So you guys have a great night. Thanks.